So the day before you graduated from college. It's like an editor's nightmare. <laughs> so the day before you graduated from college, I went up to visit my brother. And we were going out to eat at Buffalo Wild Wings together as a group with a bunch of your fraternity brothers. And I met you. And I said hello. I was introduced to you. And you kind of just gave me some shrug like, oh, hey, no big deal. And then when we went out to dinner, you let everyone file into the booth. Like everyone was like, oh, you can go, you can go, you can go. And I was so standing on the end. It's be place next to you. Yeah. So when we went to sit down, you and I were right next to each other. And we talked all the way through dinner. And then... And then I stopped and got a Godiva liquor of some sort on the way back because you said you liked Godiva chocolate, I believe, right? Yep, which I never drank. You still have it? Nope, my brother left it in his apartment. And then my brother had people over that night and we just talked some more and some more and some more. And we decided that it was so loud, we just wanted to go for a walk or get away from everyone. And behind their apartment building was a car wash. So we walked over to the car wash and walked through the car wash. It was just like a self-serve whatever just kind of walked through there made a circle and then came back we just talked and talked and talked and never really said anything about oh hey I'll get your number never got a phone number nothing we just talked a whole lot and then um, the next morning I called my mom on the way to my brother's commencement ceremony and I said I just want to let you know I met my husband and she laughed at me and she's like, you're 19 years old. Okay. <laughs> she's like, that's, that's nice. Okay. You know, no big deal. And then when we were in line, um, we had to wait in the line to get into the gymnasium or wherever we were having the, the graduation at. And when we were in line, we were with all of our friends. So I, uh, I was standing behind Colby, my brother, her brother. And I, uh, and I basically just said to him, I asked him, I said, hey, Colby, I said, would you have a problem if I dated your sister? And he was like, what do you mean? I was like, well, if I were to date your sister, would you be okay with that? I said, I would like to ask you, you know, kind of for permission. And he's kind of laughed about it. And he said, um, well, if any one of my friends were to date my sister, I probably would pick, pick you, you know, of anybody. So he uh, felt like he gave me a blessing, but I don't think he thought I was really serious at the time. It was kind of took it as a joke and then somehow I think the next was it the next day it was the same day that I got your phone number somehow from him from him okay um yeah I t what did I do that I text you about you said you were going home mm -hmm. and you went home I went home for the weekend think or no I went home for good mm -hmm. and then um, we we ended up meeting up the next night right the same night it was the same night we came home oh yeah because we went to uh, hatchets or hatchies Nope. I went to hatchies no I went to hatchies for dinner and then you and I met up later that night on Woodward yep so I waited and waited and waited for yeah, your text, <laughs> and you were with your family. I was with my family. Hey, you know, give me another half hour, okay? Give me another half hour. I'm like, it's like nine o'clock at night. I'm like, you know what? This is silly. Like, here we go, you know. So finally, he's like, okay. He's like, my family's all leaving my house. You know, he felt guilty leaving. They're all there for his graduation after dinner, and so he's like, what do you want to do? And we lived at that time about 45 minutes, like 50 minutes away. So we decided to meet halfway on Woodward. And like 14, 15 mile, maybe go to dinner or something. And we ended up just, um, we met up in a parking lot of a car dealership, I think. And we just, once again, sat and just talked and talked and talked and talked and talked. And then I went home. It's good. And then the next time we saw each other was when we went to Dan's party? I believe so, the next weekend. 
I saw you. Yep, and he, we met up and he wanted to introduce me to all of his friends. She meshed in well. They were a rowdy bunch. They had all just came back from a wedding. So they were, they were crazy. And then over the course of the next couple of weeks, we weren't really officially dating. We just saw each other every chance we could. Adam was at school. Actually, we were finishing two classes. So you were living up in Midland still. I was in Novi. And, um... I wouldn't say we were always on the same page at first with our relationship. I was like head over heels in love with a guy. And um, I had talked to his one friend and I said, hey, I said, I might go up north and surprise him. You know, do you think you could tell him that you're coming up to his apartment to see him? That way I know he'll be there. And this one was like, oh, yeah, and you know, no problem. So Adam's texting me, oh, yeah, you know, Jeff's coming up, whatever. I'm like, oh, okay. So here I am driving up myself to go see him and we're on the phone and I knock on the door. He's like, oh, okay, Jeff's here. I'm like, oh, okay. And then I was there, and I think he was like, whoa. Like. <laughs> definitely surprised. Who is this girl? I would definitely say Adam didn't think we were, I was the one at first. Takes guys a little bit longer, I guess. I guess you could say that. <laughs> and then I was really stubborn. I wouldn't tell him that I loved him. And he was really stubborn, wouldn't tell me that he loved me. So we waited and waited and waited and waited. And then a year later, we waited some more. And then finally, I think it was 13 months, we were at his cousin's wedding. And I think he had just had like two or three drinks. And he was hugging me in, in the lobby. And his little cousin's like, when are you guys going to get married? And I was like, oh, gosh, that's a long way off at this point. And um, a couple minutes later, he told me you loved me. You said it first. Mm -hmm. The night that she came up for to see her brother for graduation was the 16th, I think. Was it the 16th he came up? No, so, no, the 17th. No, the 18th. That's why at midnight it'll be. It was 18th. Okay, so it was May 18th. Um, and she came up to see her brother graduate. And so that was the night we met was May 18th. Um, so when we picked our wedding date, we decided to pick May, May 17th or closest to it. It was a Saturday. We couldn't pick May 18th because it was a Sunday, but um, at midnight it'll be May 18th, the night we met seven years ago. So that will be a um, special day. Mm -hmm. And then, let's see. So we kind of just chugged along normally for a really long time. You were done with school working. I was still in school trying to decide what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a dentist. And then Adam kind of explained to me why maybe being a PA would be a little bit better for what I wanted out of life and a family and all of that and time-wise. And so I applied to PA school and lots of stressful years there. We bought a house in the middle of that, remodeled the house completely <laughs> in the middle of that. Got a puppy, did lots of stressful things, and I will say through everything, Adam has been like a rock. I'm just a sailboat that's just like <laughs> trying to fight the waves and keep my head above water, and Adam's just that steady. Yeah, we get through. We get through most of everything, obviously, but I mean, we're, we stay pretty strong through everything. I think we're, we make a good team. Definitely. We hear a lot that people are like, oh, you guys are so opposites, but it works. Like we just, it, it works. Everything that I'm not, he is, and what he's not, I am. I think we just have a really good balance. Yeah, we balance really each other balance. out. Really good balance. And so you proposed December 23rd, 2011. <laughs> Eleven. Was it? Yep. So that's the story. Um, so we do some advertising with a magazine called Styleline, and um, <clears throat> I have a sales rep over there that I worked with regularly at the time, and she. We would regularly get invited to events. Um, 
we, you know, I would advertise with them, but they would also say, hey, we're, Stylin's having an event, you know, come to it. We're going to sponsor Glitz and Ears or whatever. So we would go to these events, but Kendall never liked going to them because she has to get all dressed up and it was kind of a production and it's just not that fun. It's kind of more of a business thing. So we, um, we would kind of go to these some things, you know, it's kind of not too crazy that we would get asked to go to one of those things once or twice a year. Um, so when planning her proposal, I was actually um, driving down to a, um, I was driving down to, we were doing a fashion show at the Free Press building, which is Free Press owns Styline. So we were going down there to, for a fashion show and I got off the freeway and I've already been kind of dabbling thoughts in my mind, like is it time, whatever, you know, should I do this now and all that kind of stuff. Um, got off the freeway and I happened to be thinking about this on my drive down there. And when I get off the freeway, I'm pulling up and I'm looking for the na the, um, the Detroit Free Press building in my navigation. And I pull up and there's a parking lot and on the, there's a building next to the parking lot that's all brick. And on the side of the whole building, it's a giant billboard. It was all white. And it said real big letters across the side of the building, time to engage. And it was just a advertisement for the Detroit Free Press. And it's the Detroit Free Press at the bottom. And as soon as I saw that sign, I took it as like a sign. I was, cause I was just thinking about that. And I was like, that was really, it was really bizarre that I saw that. So I went and did my thing at the fashion show and I literally left there and I went and bought her engagement ring that day. Um, wasn't planning on buying it. I went in there just to look, look around. I'm like, maybe it is time. And maybe I just should just go start looking at rings and stuff like that. And I walked out of there with a deposit on it. So I kind of set it in stone that day and it was just like, I don't know. I just made a real quick decision on it and decided that was it, you know? And then moving forward, I started planning when should I do this? You know, how should I do it? Where should I go? Et cetera. We had a, we had a vacation planned to go to um, Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico for New Year's. Mm -hmm. So I, um, trying to think about that. And I was like, I don't know if I want to travel and do that whole thing, trying to hide it from her the whole time. So I decided maybe I should do it beforehand, but I knew that she didn't want, I knew she wouldn't want me to do it on like Christmas or Christmas Eve, because it's kind of like a holiday. You don't want to, I don't think it's right that you do a proposal. I don't know. I didn't want to do a proposal on Christmas day. So my family throws a really big Christmas Eve party every year. I thought it would have been really nice for her to announce that we're engaged at our Christmas Eve party. So what I did was I, which is on the 24th, I planned our proposal on the 23rd, the night before. I figured that would get, give us enough time if she wanted to go see her family that night. Um, and then the next night she could announce it to all of her friends and family. Well, I actually called my rep at Styline first to see if they had any insight. I said, I want to take Kendall somewhere very nice, somewhere really, you know, different, unique. And I started looking around and I was looking at like Coach Insignia and some other places. And um, I said, I just wanted to go somewhere top notch. She goes, let me ask around some of the reporters. They do a lot of, um, you know, reviews on places like this. And, you know, they'll be able to tell me the top picks for, you know, in, in Detroit or around the area. She called me back and she goes, all right, we've got the place. You have to go to... What was the name of that restaurant? Iridescence. Iridescence. It's in the Motor City Casino Hotel. I so I I uh, called down there and seen seen if I could make a reservation, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to just make a reservation. I wanted to physically see it, go down there, see what it was all about. So I went down there and I started talking to them, and they were like, "Yeah, we do this all the time. Just tell us how you want to do it." So. I explained to them that I wanted to have a certain spot in the restaurant, you know, et cetera. So I kind of picked out where I wanted to be and how I wanted to do it. And then I ended up um, getting everything planned. I went down the night before or the, the day of the proposal and I dropped off a bag. And in the bag was a, a little, it was a, look like a ring box, but it was a, Christmas tree ornament and on the tree on the ornament it said will you marry me will you marry me and then it had that date 12 23 11 and um I didn't want to leave 
I didn't want to leave the ring down there with people at the restaurant, so I just wanted to have something, you know, different, something she could open. So um, I dropped that off there, and I had the the girl at the counter actually write on there to Kendall from Styline, and I had sent a bunch of emails back and forth to my rep at Styline that were which were just fake, just trying to like coach this whole we're gonna have the Styline event. Um, they were inviting us down for, you know, Glitz Nears down for this event. So I was trying to get her to be able to be dressed up and, you know, all of that. So I just had her say in the email, yeah, let's go down and you guys have to try this restaurant. Just go there and have dinner before and, you know, I'll, I'll give you guys a coupon or whatever to try to, you know, get us to go there. So we, um, we went to, uh, you know, I got her pretty convinced. I think you were pretty convinced that we were going to some style and event because I think you were dreading it yeah you were complaining i didn't before want to go to went. this dinner i hated going to all of these events just socializing with people you don't really know and it i don't it just seems i would rather just spend my time eating dinner with you or whatever so he told me we were going to the dinner first because they recommended if we were down there we should try this restaurant and then we were going to go to the soundboard for more of like the appetizers and drinks function so right so we um we went down there and I went to my parents' house before I I had to go get my tie tied, you know, but I was going to pick up the ring too. I left it there and then um, picked her up. I was nervous and then you wanted to call and change our reservation because we were running late. Yeah, and you were really hesitant. You're like, no, no, don't call them. Do not call down. Do not call that restaurant. Like, I'm like, well, I always, we run late frequently. So I was going to call and say hey we're 10 minutes behind or whatever and he was like do not don't call and I was a little like okay usually he's like oh yeah you know make sure so we don't lose our spot or whatever but he was I should have known at that time how adamant he was like don't don't call I was like okay so when we were actually sitting down eating we ordered our meal and we were I think we just finished our actual dinner our entree and they brought over this bag to me and it was this purple bag with this um which is I think the color with this paper tissue paper and every time you go to one of these events they give you a little swag bag so it's like a copy of their magazine and then a little gift card to wherever you're actually hosting the event at then there's like a pen from a bank and a little keychain I mean just like little trinkety stuff that people put together so they hand me this bag like oh this is from Styline and I was like okay you know here's our gift card and pen and keychain like okay you know no big deal so he goes open it and I go we're eating dinner why you open it like what and then I specifically remember, he goes, no, you open it. I go, why? What is it, a bomb? Like, why are, you, why are you so insistent that I open this? So he's like, no, really, you open it. So I open it, and there was a silver, um, like a little box in the actual bag. So then I'm opening that and more tissue. And, like, the next thing I knew, I'm looking at an ornament that says, will you marry me? And I was just in complete shock. And I turned, and Adam was on his knee. And there was, um, he had given them our camera, so the waiter was taking pictures of us. And it was really shocking after waiting a very long time so it was a great day and then as soon as I left there I'd promised my one best friend that I'd call her she was the first phone call I was supposed to make as soon as we got engaged so I had to call Gabrielle and then I called my parents who were of course waiting for the phone call because they knew Adam had asked my dad a couple weeks before so my mom was just through the roof so was my dad. And so we actually went from Detroit to Novi to go show my parents my ring and to see them. My aunt was in from Florida, which was really nice. She was there too. And then we went all the way back to Clinton Township to show your parents my ring because he wouldn't show anyone um, before he proposed. He wanted me to be the first person to see my ring, other than obviously the people who work at the jewelry store. So there was that, and everyone was just beyond excited. And then the next day was Christmas Eve and Adam had his big um, family Christmas party and lots of family and friends show up so we were at his parents house and I wasn't wearing my ring it was in his pocket and um, I think we had a lot of people most of our friends were already there and Adam made an announcement it was really awesome he just you know I think you were like hitting a glass and got everyone's attention and just said I just want to let everyone know I proposed to my best friend last night and she said yes so it was really touching it was exciting well, I haven't told any of my friends about the proposal at all. So they were pretty surprised when they heard it. You know, they were definitely shocked. They were not expecting because most guys would say, you know, talk to their buddies about it or whatever. I just didn't. 
kept it to myself. Yeah, I think everyone was surprised as to how secretive you really were. I think your parents knew, and my parents knew, and that was it. You were pretty tight-lipped. They're lucky they knew. <laughs> <laughs> that was about it. And it was funny that he, um, the, I think it was, the, you went to two stores that day that you wanted to look at rings, and he ran into a couple people at both stores family friends and he was so nervous that I was going to find out because I think there was like two, three, four, how I, I can't remember. He ran into people and everyone's like, what are you doing here? You know, and he was like, I'm just looking for a Christmas gift. And they're like, okay. <laughs> so everyone was pretty good about keeping the secret that had, you know, a couple people mm -hmm. had, I'm sure, assumed. I was in shock. I did not cry. I'm a crier and Right after Adam proposed, I you know put the ring on, and it was it was actually it was a really beautiful moment. It was one of those things that obviously no one in the restaurant knew us, but everyone knew what was going on. So people are standing up and clapping, and it was really awesome. So you kind of have that you know surreal moment of oh my gosh, this is like it. This is what I waited my whole life for. So um, I was just I was in shock, and it was just one of those things. You're like, is this? Am I dreaming right now? Someone pinched me. It wasn't like a I wasn't overcome with like a crying emotion at that time. So everything settles down and like five minutes later, Adam's like, you didn't cry. You didn't cry. You didn't cry. Like, what's going on? Why? You're supposed to cry. Every girl cries. Why didn't you cry? <laughs> and I'm definitely making up for it now. Every time we talk about the wedding and now that it's getting close, we definitely cry. But we actually, we got in the car and I just started bawling like a baby. I was just, I was crying, 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 crying. So it, it hit me. I think it just took a good hour before I was like, wow, this is actually really happening. So I was so excited. I don't think I was overly pushy as far as getting engaged, but it's one of those things all of your friends are, and then you go to wedding after wedding after wedding, you're like, I want to get married. So I've never met someone I could ever trust more. And I mean that in like every way, shape, or form. Um, I think that he follows through on everything he says he's going to do. It doesn't matter if it's, change a light bulb or I promise that I will make you as happy as I ever could possibly make you. He follows through on the little stuff, the big stuff, everything in between. He goes out of his way anytime he can just to make my life a little easier. If it means jumping up to let the dog out as soon as they're kind of barking and kind of rustling and to be the one to do that or go get gas in my car and just Things I didn't even, just little things here and there. I think you're just really, really, really thoughtful. And you try as best you can to make me happy every day, no matter what it is. And you always put me before yourself. And you're really handsome. Right? You're embarrassing me. Mm -hmm. I think that you're such a good person it makes me want to try to be a better person because I just see so much goodness in you that it's like oh, I'm never going to stack up but I could at least try obviously I mean Kendall's my best friend we've had gone through thick and thin together I think and we we really we really do have a lot of trust for each other a lot of trust and um, I think that there's a lot of things that make us really strong in our relationship um, she's I mean we both do a lot for each other but there's a lot that she does for me it's the little things I think that really make you stand out um not only to me but even friends of mine have said things that you know like little like she puts pictures of me <laughs> pictures of us in my suitcase or in my clothes or whatever just like cute things that she does that are just to r remind me or remind us you know what i mean or i'll come home and there's a note on the door and there's you know you know a a gift that she'll be waiting for me or something just you know little things like that that she does it really shows that she cares 
Um, she, you know, I know that if there's ever anything that I would need, she would definitely go out of her way to do that for me. Uh, she's my best friend. We talk about everything. I mean, we tell each other everything. We're open and honest about everything in our relationship and everything in our lives. Um, one thing that Adam, probably one of the reasons why Adam was a little slow to warm up at first is that even at 19, I think I was pretty open with saying, yep, I want 10 kids, so you're either on board or you're not. So we may not, you know, get married or anything like that, but there's no sense in continuing this relationship if it's not something you're open to because I don't want to be five years down the road and all of a sudden you say, oh, I don't want kids. And so I think I made it pretty. <laughs> and she wonders why it took 13 months to say I love you. <laughs> um, so I think I was pretty, I mean, I wasn't pushing saying, hey, you, you, you're the one that I'm going to have kids with. But I was just like, hey, you know, just so you kind of have a heads up, I want a big family. And I think <laughs> this is how I feel. So um one thing I will say is, I know it's really no comparison, but with our dogs, Adam is so loving and so kind and so gentle. And he really didn't even love my dog at first. When I first met him, I had my little puppy and he's like, huh, I really don't know why you think she's so cute. Now this dog is like my world. And I was like, oh, oh my goodness. And now him and the dog are inseparable. He takes over work every day and they are just like two peas in a pod. He absolutely loves that dog. And then we now have a new puppy. And, of course, the dog loves him, too, <laughs> that one. So just to see how he is, I mean, how he cares and how he just talks to them and teaching our dog a new trick and how excited he gets and just to see how he is. And I'm so excited to have kids with you, just to have, like, a little boy that looks like you and just to see how you look at even, you know, our dogs. It's so silly, but just to know that how caring and how loving and gentle and good you are with them I just know you're going to be an amazing father which is so 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 important to me that definitely was one of the most important things to me and um in a relationship was how how does my wife uh add up to be a mother you know I feel that Kendall has obviously good role models as parents think that um, there's just, she has a way with kids. I remember you always wanted to work at daycares and always wanted to be around children and there's always children around and you always wanted to be, take care of them and, and they gravitate to her like magnets. And um, I just think that she, with her personality and I just knew instantly she was gonna be an awesome mom. And I think that was probably, that's definitely one of the most important decisions that you know, that I've made is her most important reason is she's going to be a great mom and a great wife. That's so nice. Thank you. And she's super attractive. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying that because I called you that? No. We're just excited to get married. Everyone's like, oh, the wedding and this and that. And like, we are so, we're, we're, I mean, uncontrollably excited for our wedding, but we are so excited to be married. Like I look at him and I, sometimes I'll send him a text and I'll say, you know, in a month I'm going to have a husband in capital letters and just, you know, say things like that. And I think we're so excited to just, we've been together for almost seven years now and we're just excited to have I have more of like a formality to it and this is like just the importance and just to have that that title there we're really excited for that and to have our marriage and just to solidify everything and yeah build a life together I think that's that's what we're really most excited for at the end of the day is just starting the rest of our forever and we've worked really hard in so many ways um, spiritually, especially recently, we've, um, we went through a whole host of classes with, um, stuff and then just, we worked hard at our careers and school and communicating and just growing as people to try to be better for one another and just listen to each other and try to figure out what the other one needs and I think it's we've, we've we've definitely spent a lot of time and 
adapted to each other. We adapt every day. I think we are constantly developing our relationship. Mm -hmm. um, no, yeah, our wedding day was like absolutely by far the best day of my life. Yeah. Hands down. It was. I had actually so many people come to me like, I'm, Adam is just so happy. Adam is just beyond, beyond happy. But um, I think someone, I was saying, oh, you know, it's all of your friends and all your family. They're like, oh, well, you know, when your brother gets married, I'm like, no, my wedding day was everyone of our loved ones, our friends. Like, you will never have another day in your whole entire life where every single person that you love and that you want to share that day with you is there. It is pretty cool. Yeah, just the feedback we get from people was, I mean, really awesome to hear, you know? People talking about how nice it was, how much fun they had. Right, and I think that's, we when we went away on our honeymoon, we, we left the next day. So we went to the brunch that morning, and there was a good handful of people. I mean, we had a great turnout at the brunch. Um, you know, but it's still, you know, all aboard, you go and everyone's like, hi, how are you? That whole thing. And then we left. The brunch ended at noon. We left not even an hour later for the airport. And so when we left, it, we we were out of the country, so we really couldn't get a hold of anyone. And um, we were like, wow, we're going to be gone for so long that when we came back, everything, lots of crazy stuff happened. My people changed jobs and married and babies. All this stuff it was really weird when we left, but we came home. We're like, gosh, it's, you know, we kind of done and over with. Is it kind of, you know, not a thought in, in anyone's mind anymore? But we had so many people. I mean, it, I can't even tell you. Just with every, you know, on Facebook or phone calls and emails and our parents especially. And his mom saved a bunch of voicemails we listened to. And everyone telling us that they had fun that day and they could, like, feel the love between Adam and I. And, you know, just everyone enjoying the day as well you know we knew we enjoyed the day but it's like are we really the only ones having fun here <laughs> you know you kind of wonder but when you look at the pictures and everyone says it's they had so much fun at that wedding it's one of the best weddings they've been to and you know all the heart there everyone thinks it's beautiful and after you've worked for years to put the day together and it finally turns out to be better than you could have ever imagined that's so cool I was so calm, cool, and collected the whole day. I was, you know, which is, uh, I'm not really, I just it wasn't nervous at all, surprisingly. I mean, not even, the only time that I got nervous was when the doors opened and she was walking down the aisle. My heart started beating through my chest. That was the only time during the day that I was nervous at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Before I saw Adam, I just, I was so excited to see him. You know, it was one of those things I had my the picture of my dress on my phone. I was like, do you want to see it? Do you want to see it? He's like, no. He's like, that's the moment when you come down that aisle and I get to see you. So there's just that, that's just the moment. There's so much anticipation for it. And it's just my, um, my dad, who's so sweet, um, knew he could tell I was anxious and, you know, all that. And so we were holding hands before the door opened and the wedding coordinator who's at the church she looked at me, she's like, are you guys ready? And I looked at my dad, and I was like, he goes, just remember? He's like, it only gets better from here. And I was like, we're ready, let's do this, open the door. Um, so then it was it was really cool. And then as soon as I walked, everyone loves the video too, because when I, I'm sure you know, obviously, but when I walked up and Adam Mouth, you look beautiful, everyone was just, it was, it was just like a calming moment, because it's, you're like, oh, can we talk? Should we not talk? But then, you know, just to have a little bit of a dialogue there. It just calmed everything. I will say we both were, were relatively calm for... Everyone says, you know, oh, it's, you're going to be so nervous and cold feet or this yeah. and that, but... I didn't, I didn't understand that. I, I think that that's partially because we had... We were engaged for almost three years. <laughs> We were, right. I was over. I was over the. I mean, I felt more nervous during the first, you know, six months than I did on my wedding day. Yeah. But um, I was a little nervous for like, you know, having to do things and stuff like that. But not really. I was pretty, mm -mm. pretty calm. But yeah, I think we were both just excited to see each other and 
Yeah. And then our um Enjoy the day. And all of our friends, all of our stand ups, you know, just even going around on the limo and just to see them have a good time and everyone's not to see them have a good time, but to see the support that they gave us. Oh yeah. I mean just people going out of their way to ask us if we need things or just to help us in any way that they could. I mean, just great group of friends we have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're, we're so blessed. We really are, and our family. They've been incredible, beyond. And Adam even dance. It's on film. Adam delete, dance. Delete it. <laughs> He did. So it's pretty special. Um, my grandpa, who's just turned 86, he it was so funny. He called, or I called him for his birthday after the wedding, and he goes, "You know, that was the, you know, the most fun I've had in years." He's like, "I can't even remember the last time I had so much fun." He's like, "Your band." He's like, "Your band was amazing." He even said, "He goes, your band was kick ass." I'm like, "Grandpa, you're 86. I've never heard him swear ever." <laughs> Okay, and he goes, and I had so much fun. And if anyone didn't have fun, it's their own fault. He was just, he was just right. He was just raving. He was so cute. This little man, there's pic. I don't know if he's nice. I both my grandfathers were there, but one's um, almost blind, so he obviously wasn't dancing with me. But the one was dancing, and my grandmother passed away a couple years ago, and it's just been really. He's just been not the same ever since. But just you know, family events get kind of sad, but he, you could tell he was just so happy that day. So it was. It was awesome. And then even um, at the actual, at the church, um, I couldn't believe how many people came. I was, I was shocked. My dad came up and he's like, gosh, when we were waiting um, in the little vestibule to walk down the aisle, the bridesmaids were still in there. He goes, there's only like four people out there. He's like, oh gosh, I, you know, I hope, hope people remembered it was today. And I'm like, what do you mean there's four people out there? <laughs> he was totally kidding. But um, just to see, you know, everyone's faces and it's just, it's really incredible that, you know, they're all there to support us. And I just have such a new appreciation for weddings. And I just went to a wedding shower the other day and I was so excited it wasn't me who had to be <laughs> the bride, but just to, you know, share that. And I think that people, once you are married and you have that, I think it does give you a new appreciation for people that are kind of, you know, that are now entering into this crazy thing. But. I think too about the church though. Um, I really enjoyed our ceremony. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, Father Pepper did a really nice job of have you know having including a, everyone, including everyone, and uh, just getting the crowd. He was just lighthearted, you know. And he mm -hmm. was. Uh, it was formal, but at the same time, you weren't. You didn't feel like you were sitting in your seat, kind of like that. I think he just made it less boring. You know what I mean? I just it's always a plus. <laughs> I mean, he, masses are just kind of straightforward all the time, and he just was mm -hmm. got the crowd going a little bit. And I think that everyone liked that. We had a lot of compliments about that too. Mm -hmm. They actually liked it. I actually got one of my one of the compliments that I got several times was they liked how traditional everything was. They which said it's you like, wanted. which is what I wanted. They were like people noticed that it was like it's kind of old school. You know, they liked it that way. Minus the uh, billion pound dress. He picked up my dress the next morning. He was like, oh, you wore this all day? Like, yes, I did. Yeah, I was shocked at how heavy it was. Oh, my gosh. It was so heavy. I couldn't even hold it together when I was opening the gift. I mean, it was just unbelievable. We had, she wrote me this really amazing letter. Um, I got, you know, I got to read it. I was not even able to keep it together the whole time and um just really surprised i was you know not expecting anything like that and it was just a really amazing feeling you know and i had um having you know my family around and stuff like that was just kind of all surreal you know i feel like uh it was a nice gesture for kendall to show me how much she loves me by doing that i think it was something that she knows that I've wanted for the long t for a long time from the bottom or from the bottom of her heart she wanted to do that for me. I think it was um it really meant a lot. I think it's something that means a lot to me. It probably will always mean a lot 
will always mean a lot to me and something I'm going to hold on to forever. For sure. Don't make me cry. <laughs> I remember standing in an airport in Cabo four years ago and Adam's always wanted this particular watch or one like it. And I remember standing in security line and there was a guy who had this watch and Adam's like, oh my gosh, I would, it's like my dream one day, I just want to have one of those watches. I'm like, okay, I'm like one day you'll have one. And I just knew right then in my mind, I'm like, I think for a wedding gift, we weren't even engaged. I'm like one day I'm gonna work hard and just, he's done so much to make me happy. Even before, I mean, since the day I met him, he's done everything and anything to make me happy. It doesn't matter what it is, doesn't matter what length he has to go to, he's just, he's never put himself first, ever. Like, I've always been number one, forever. And I feel like he's so selfless. Like, he, I was in school for <laughs> pretty much until last August. So, you know, for the first six years we were together, and I was, and it didn't, not even in a materialistic way, but just, to give Adam something I know he's wanted so, so, so much. Um, and to finally be, a, you know, to be able to do that and make him happy for once because I feel like he's always putting his, his needs aside for mine or ourselves or, you know, what we could do to make our life better and the little, you know, things that are materialistic or, you know, things that aren't necessarily necessity he doesn't even doesn't even think about would never even really you know ask for it because he just would never expect me to do such a thing so um just to show him how much I do care about him and want him you know to know that I want him to be happy no matter what it is and you know it's one small gesture that I hope would show him that I want to do the same thing for him to make his needs, wants, um, my it's priority. Just, it's something that symbolizes our wedding day. You know, it's uh, it's not like we just went and randomly got each other some really nice gift. We got each other a really nice gift that's we're gonna hang on to and enjoy for the rest of our lives. And every time we see that gift or wear that gift, we're gonna remember that we got that as a wedding gift and not just some random gift. I think that the what it symbolizes is what's really key. Mm -hmm. Definitely, and I got the right definitely one. makes it more. <laughs> Just that, like, it's it's something that's one of those gifts that I've always wanted. Something that I've like that I even I, I probably I would never buy that for myself, but I would, but I I appreciate it as what it is, as it is, and then. Um, to get that as a wedding gift is just out of this world. I mean, it was, you can't really put a price on that. You know what I mean? It's just, uh, something that I want. And, you know, it's not just some random gift that gets stuck in a corner somewhere. It's something that I'm going to wear. It's something that I'm going to, you know what I mean? Use on a regular basis. And it's going to always, I'm going to always remember that it was a wedding gift from Kendall, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think that um, he did a lot to make this, like, our wedding day perfect for me. I feel like, you know, even when you talk to people, they're like, oh, it's all about the bride, it's all about this, it's all about that. And I, I think it just went along with the whole thing, our whole, you know, the whole time we were dating and then engaged. It's, I feel like it's always, he's always on board with whatever I do. He's just it's always, you know, and I wanted something to be about him and something to truly show him how much I care for everything he sacrificed for me and done for me. So it's kind of funny because in the morning I sent her a text. I said, good morning, babe. Can't wait to see you today. She didn't respond to me. I didn't have my phone on my phone. Mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> my phone was plugged into the speaker and I got a couple other texts and people were like reading them to me and then no one, um, I don't, I, my, my phone was playing the music that was, we were listening to, we were getting ready. And I didn't have it like on me. I um, never responded that. But here's, here's why though. So she sent me that text and then, or I'm sorry, I sent her that text. And then I sent her this text after I got 
the gift. I said, oh my God, babe, this thing is absolutely beautiful and your letter was perfect and amazing. Thank you so much. You are the best person in the world and my best friend. I love you so much, babe. I can't thank you enough. I love you. P.S. It's perfect. She didn't respond to that one either. So... <laughs> I didn't? No. But no, you know... <laughs> I think I did. I was like, uh... You know, so... Then I realized everyone's... I told my buddies, I was in the, I'm like, Kendall's not responding to me right now. Like, what's going on with this, you know? And they're like... Uh, you know you're not supposed to communicate until when your wedding day until you see each other. I go, I thought you're just not supposed to see each other. They're like, no, you're not supposed to communicate at all. And I was like, oh, maybe that's why. So I just put I my phone away. That. I because I texted you that morning. I said good morning. I think, like really early. Yeah. But anyway, so I didn't respond back. I was busy. I had to get my dress on. I think at that point. So, yeah. But you know, it was nice to see that text. I was, it was, it was awesome. I needed that. You. Even though I didn't respond, and maybe you think someone told you we weren't supposed to talk, it was, it was perfect timing. It was great. It was fun. Then it's fun when we were up, um, you know, the formality of church and not talking and listening and this and that, and you know, where he's like, oh, okay. you know, just to see him wearing it, and it was good. It was the best day. It was. What about your your gift? So my gift, Adam, is like he's not. He thinks I knew what I was getting. Um, no, you did. So my mom um, received diamond earrings from my dad as a wedding gift when they got married. Adam's like, you know, I really don't know what to to get you and this and that. And I said, you know, my mom got diamond earrings. It was a perfect gift. They're timeless. It's wonderful. This and that. Well, when I went to his office. There was this box there, but I mean, there's jewelry everywhere. I even remember seeing the box and I don't, I, I did not think, oh, those are my diamond earrings. It didn't even cross my mind. God's honest truth. So even you, when my- You specifically were like, what is that? Like nothing? Uh-huh. I didn't, I, I just didn't even think that. So when my brother brought the gift in and I opened it, I was truly shocked. I was absolutely shocked but so 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 happy so i think you've started a tradition that if we ever have a daughter and she gets married <laughs> so she's gonna have to get so no i was i was shocked and i was pretty excited and it was an amazing gift so once again adam goes above and beyond per usual it was pretty incredible and his letter i remember reading the letter and i was just so emotional and i could I looked at my dad or saw, heard my dad and he's like, Adam, stop it. And I was like, I was laughing because he was pretty emotional about it too. So it's pretty awesome. Where is that? It's at home. Hmm. In our bag. <clears throat> we can go home and read it. <laughs> Just what you want to do after mm -hmm. we watch our video. <laughs> <laughs> she had this. She has her video on repeat. It was it was driving me nuts, literally. In the airport, on the airplanes, in wherever we're at the whole time. Just and plugged into the car, going through all the speakers. Or or out. when we're at the pool. <laughs> hey Adam, uh, do we have internet connection? No. Can we get it? Why? Well, we gotta watch this video again. <laughs> really? I mean, we, I've I've probably seen it. She's probably seen it at least eighty times. I was gonna say fifty. I mean, well, I guess twice a day for. I mean, way too many times, but it's amazing. It really is. So that's exciting. I just think even, um, oh, it's fine. Okay. Keep it clear that just to, um, just to see his face again and just how happy. Oh, it's so cool. Our grand entrance. Which entrance? Which one? Where we came into the thing? Our grand one. <laughs> I don't know. We get a bunch of them. Yeah, remember when we came in? You said that it was like the best oh, thing. Oh, that was, I don't, you guys go to a lot of weddings, but I feel like the bride and groom walk in and everyone's like, yay, and the bride and groom are like, oh, woohoo. And then like, with all of our stand-ups, we all just kind of started dancing, and I just, that moment to me just sticks out like none other. I don't know why. I just felt like it, I just I that was the one time I felt like it was us 
and all of our stand-ups. So the 16 of us, I felt like it was the 16 of us in a room and no one else. And we were just, just truly having, it was a, the, the one of the coolest moments of the whole night. So cool. It really was. But I truly felt in that moment that we were just there with our closest, closest friends and we were just, just could feel the love. I think that's one thing about the day, just feeling everyone's love and just genuine though. I mean, just, I guess you just, you don't realize until it's your wedding how, how people just truly are incredible. And it started all at our shower when people, I mean, people flying in, I think we told you this, from like out of state. I mean, for our shower, it was just, it was, it's the most incredible feeling. It really is. It was a perfect day. It was truly. At the end of the day, it was absolutely unbelievable.